third presenter A03 is by Dr. Mi Li Lui, Multiple Intelligence in Personalized Teaching and Learning Strategies. Please welcome Dr. Mi. Hi, good morning everyone. Um, good morning. Uh, before I start, can I check uh, whether everyone can see my slide? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, thanks again uh, for EDEC UM uh, for this session. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me to uh, present our projects here. So I would like to uh, represent my group from the Department of Biomedical Science, Faculty of Medicine, on this project that uh, we have uh, carried out in uh, our year one students for 2019 and 2020 intake. So uh, our project is on the multiple intelligence in personalized teaching and learning strategy. So before I start, maybe uh, it's good to take a look of uh, this uh, personalized teaching and learning. What is uh, personalized education? So when we talk about personalized, meaning we need to customize how we can actually customize the education for our students. So when we talk about personalized teaching and learning, uh, we would like to actually customize something for our students based on their strength, their needs, skills, and also interests. But how, how we could actually uh, make it happen? What kind of mechanism that we should do, we should use for personalized education and to make sure not everyone, uh, not uh, leaving everyone or uh, anyone behind. So first, um, maybe, we can recall our experience in our teaching. So many of us may have uh, experience that uh, some of the students may not be able to understand what you have delivered, but uh, somehow when you change the way of delivering the information, you found students be able to, to grasp the information. So why it is so? So now we go back to the uh, theory of this um, uh, multiple intelligence. So what is this uh, multiple intelligence theory that developed by Dr. Ganus? It's about human. Every human have different type of intelligence and it is not only limited to uh, IQ, you know. So for each, um, for this kind of human intelligence, um, people would tend to uh, have different way of pro processing uh, information. Under theory of uh, developed by Dr. Garner, uh, we have eight uh, different types of multiple intelligence. So first of all, look into this uh, verbal intelligence, or we call it as a uh, word smart. This kind of people, they tend to uh, very good in verbal communication and they have a very good uh, or strong memory. For logical or uh, multiple intelligence, this kind of people we call it as number smart or we call it reasoning smart. So this kind of people uh, tend to be very good in problem solving and also reasoning. People with a uh, naturalist uh, intelligence, usually those people who appreciate um, outdoors or hands-on experience, these people are very observant and empathy. And we have people also with a bodily um, intelligence, or we call it as kinetistic uh, intelligence. And this kind of people, we call it as body smart. So they tend to use their bo body movement for self-expression. Uh, they also prefer to have hands-on activity and also physical learning. And uh, another kind of uh, multiple intelligence is the musical. And these people uh, tend to, uh, we call it as music smart because uh, they're usually easy to recognize the sound and also tone. And they, they have the musical capability. We also have um, interpersonal uh, intelligence. So interpersonal uh, intelligence, we call it as people smart. So these people are very good in management and leaders, leadership. So they, they like to be in a social setting. And how about intrapersonal? This kind of people will be opposite of interpersonal in which they are uh, self-smart. 
So meaning they are individualistic, but not saying that not good, but they, they would actually have their goal and they like to uh, prioritize their personal goal and mental and also emotional health. So they know how to care of themselves. So and the last group of the intelligent is the visual intelligence. These people, we call them picture smart because uh, they are very creative and imaginative and they will appreciate the image uh, also sensation. So we know that different people may have different type of multiple intelligence. So how, and that's why we would like to to develop a teaching uh, strategies in which uh, we could try to uh, enhance the student learning experience and also whether or not we want to see by having this kind of multiple intelligence based teaching strategy, it would uh, not only enhance uh, and whether or not it acquisition of knowledge. So in this uh, study, actually, we try to get some feedback of this from the students on uh, their experience uh, based on the strategies that, that we have implemented uh, during the semester. And also we observe the performance uh, by looking at the great performance of the students after the changes that we have made. So that would deliver whether or not uh, it will improve the acquisition of the knowledge of the students. So first thing, uh, we need to know our learner first. So the first thing we did uh, was the um, identify their multiple intelligence in every student. So we actually tested this in our first year students in 2019-2020 uh, intake. And uh, after knowing their intelligence profile, then uh, we have a brainstorming session in which we actually uh, uh, discuss about what type of teaching strategy will be good for this batch of students. Then we pick one subject from our semester one, and uh, we only take one component of the assessment in which uh, we use this uh, teaching and also uh, assessment strategies for different intelligence uh, for this assignment and see how they actually feel about the um, how the student feel about the assignment and overall experience. Then in the semester two, because of the MCO, we managed to actually carry out the whole uh, plan online. So I think we take advantage of this uh, MCO. So uh, we implement it in SAM2, uh, which is the semester just over that uh, then we see the performance of our students. So first thing uh, I would like to present this is the overall profile of our uh, students' multiple intelligence. Uh, so for first year, if you look at here, of all these eight groups of uh, multiple intelligence, we found that uh, our students are quite strong in most of the uh, multiple intelligence uh, asset verbal. So meaning that we know that if we are going to set an assignment which a student need to present orally, they may not be able to perform well. So uh, we would try to um, not saying to uh, totally avoid it, but uh, we would like to uh, focus more on other intelligence. So here we see that uh, this student may be uh, more towards intrapersonal, in which uh, they are more self-aware and um, they're also uh, very good in uh, mathematics maybe because uh, most of them uh, propose this uh, logical intelligence. So after we know the profile of our students, now we actually come up with different strategy in which we can use for different group of the uh, multiple intelligence. So for example, here I, we have like came up with a few um, items that we can use for our teaching uh, strategy as our teaching strategy. For example, for those students who are very good in verbal, we maybe we can set a debate session, <clears throat> brainstorming session, or maybe oral presentation, but in this group of students, as we see from the results, maybe that not may may not be a good idea for this. So move on. This group of students is uh, they are very good in uh, mathematics uh, or, or very good in logical um, 
intelligence. So what we can do here, maybe um, we could set some calculation, classification kind of activities or Socrative questioning kind of activities for this group of students. And we also have students with a natural, uh, which are uh, naturalists. So maybe hands-on activity will be good for not only for naturalists, and also we can also use the same approach, hands-on activities for um, bodily or smart students. Musical or uh, audio program, also mixture or melody, maybe we can use in our teaching strategies. So uh, we also have students which are good in uh, interpersonal. So I think group work will be work well uh, in this group of students. And of course, uh, for interpersonal reflection kind of session will be good also. Um, for visual and special, the special intelligence, um, we think that uh, some activities like uh, setting up animation and also video presentation uh, together with graphic, graphic and also picture presentation would be good for this group of students. So after having this idea, then we actually came up with the um, an assignment in semester one in which we are asking the students uh, to actually produce a music uh, video. Uh, in this music video, students will be assessed of, in, in terms of the content delivery and also the creativity uh, and also the group work. So how we actually uh, do it is that uh, we pick one assignment in the cell biology course and we make it a, a group project, make it as a group project. So in this group, uh, this is a real example in which uh, in this group we have five students and uh, every student proposed a different type of multiple intelligence. So based on their profile, we as a lecturer, we actually um, assign them in a group. So hoping that they can actually uh, help each other in, um, in this assignment. Because uh, if we don't know their multiple intelligence and we randomly assign them, they may end up having a, a gap in between in which they may not be able to deliver. And uh, for this multiple intelligence um, approach, right, is not only help to empower the full range of the personal intelligence, but in this theory, in this multiple intelligence theory, it also saying that by grouping different people in a group, um, people, uh, the, the student with certain strength may be empowered, okay? But those who are very weak, they may actually have the potential to, to uh, develop and it's a way to unearth a learner's potential while developing their weak intelligence. So in this way, uh, knowing their multiple intelligence, we group them uh, based on different um, intelligence. Then we came up with the assignment in which the student need to um, produce a music uh, video about cells. So I have the uh, video as an example. So this was student be able to achieve So they learn about theory, they learn about people. They manage to sing, and by singing, they may be able to memorize the text. Dr. Louis, oh. we, we can't hear. Is there a music that we should hear? So Is they use the uh, nursery song and then they change the content into science-related um, content and then they sing it out, they prepare a video. So after the assignment, we actually ask the student about their experience. So if you can see here, uh, the, the, bar, uh, the, the blue color and also the toque color represent the strongly agree and agree um, percentage. So if you look at the feedback from the students based on the experience that they have, they actually found that um, they notice they have uh, different types of people with specific skill in their group. 
And they also manage to learn from their team members by having the group. And the next question we actually ask whether or not the assignment would be able to increase uh, their ability to collaborate uh, and also work in a group. And majority of them, they agree with that. And they were actually happy to work in the same group in future. And surprisingly, not, all, not everyone actually having the music, um, musical intelligence, but when we are letting them to do the music video assignment, majority of them actually uh, like it and then they feel enjoyable. So we know that by putting them with different uh, multiple intelligence background into the same group and work on a project, it works. So in the coming semester, uh, which is in semester two, uh, we actually use a, a strategy in the epidemiology and biostatistic course. So uh, before I go into the changes, maybe have a look at the course learning outcome of this course. Uh, it's quite uh, straightforward. Students need to know about the concept, about the application and know how to uh, or demonstrate the application. So the previous uh, semesters, the assessment plan for this course is 50% written text and 50% final exam. So this is a very conventional or traditional paper, uh, paper and uh, pen approach. So if a student is not uh, good in, uh, in expressing themselves in written form, they may not be able to perform well. So before I go into the changes, maybe have a look with the performance first. This is the performance at the end of this semester, semester two. So semester two is the purple bar and uh, previous semester for the same course is representing in, uh, re represented in the green bar. So we can see here the performance of our students in the current semester after we have all these changes are uh, uh, better better than the previous semester and many of them actually get A and A minus. So what are the changes that we have done? So previous semester, as I mentioned earlier, we have 50% written test and 50% final exam. But for the, um, the, the, the recent semester, we actually make changes in which we have allocated 40% of the assessment uh, for the assignment. So what kind of assignment that we are actually doing? Uh, we are not only like uh, giving the assignment, but we, we make sure we have variety of assignment that uh, cater for different group of intelligence. So in order to deliver our content, we are uh, because of the MCO, we have pre-recorded lecture videos. Not only that, there is a quite standard way of delivering. We also have the synchronized uh, discussion session. We have we has also uh, online demonstration session for the students which cater for the group of uh, visual smart and also word smart kind of uh, students and we also have portion of our uh, assignment uh, allocated for the calculation kind of exercises and uh, we allow the student to have some hands-on experience by giving them the, uh, the access to the software and we also give them the real life example by plucking the the articles from the part map and let the student um, evaluate and also uh, critically review the papers and then answer to the questions. And uh, we put them in group first and let them familiarize with the assignments uh, pattern. Afterwards, only then we put them in individual assignment, hoping that they can now learn how to uh, answer the similar questions um, that they have practiced before. So why, what is the reason uh, we actually um, have this multiple intelligence? Not only that, we can also use the uh, technology to support the multiple intelligence, knowing that the fact that uh, technology not only can help us in content delivery, we can also create a virtual learning environment and also uh, uh, having a problem-based learning kind of uh, uh, approach for our students. And we can also get our students active uh, to participate in the classroom activities. And here we actually summarize some of the platform that you may use in uh, different uh, reasons. 
and same, same platform you can actually use for different type of the intelligence as represented uh, presented in these uh, slides. So at the end, uh, what we'd like to conclude here is that flexibility and variety are the keys to uh, personalized teaching and learning. By having the flexibility and variety, a student can actually have the uh, timely access to the information. Not only that, um, students' different intelligence will be valued and appreciated, and they are given the chance to express themselves. And with that, they have a feel of uh, a sense of the, they can feel a sense of connections and, and also belonging. Uh, with that, thank you.